Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, we're gonna be talking about AMD's latest APU that is not available right now and won't be available for quite some time yet. So everyone that's a little bit worried about having their 7840U device that they just ordered become obsolete, don't worry about that so much. That's not really gonna be the case. Let's start talking about what news was just released and we'll talk about all the Watts's, all the Watts uh, tweet that he had tweeted out earlier. We're gonna cover some of the other articles that other people have talked about with this. So we're gonna go over it very briefly. Thank you also to the people that replied to me, uh, getting back to me because I had questioned if this is going to be 128 bit or 256 bit wide, uh, because I wasn't really sure where that was going. It's still very clear that uh, Strix Halo is going to be the only 256 bit wide part. There's also more uh, CUs on the GPU side, so it's a bigger chip overall and most likely going to be chiplet. What that means to you is that this particular part that we're going to be taking a look at here, this is most likely going to be AMD's 8850U which is going to be monolithic in design. So it's a single package that contains the whole of the chip itself versus something that's like a chiplet package, which is using uh, bits and pieces from other parts that they've built and putting it on top of the substrate to create a cohesive whole. That is what other types of desktop chips that AMD has available. Uh, but as far as all we are concerned, every chip that we've ever worked with on a handheld has been monolithic by design. More than likely, it's going to continue being the case that it will continue to be monolithic. So this is done on TSMC's uh, N4P node. Now here is the part that some people may get tripped up about. So I talked about this a little bit prior in an AMD coverage part that I did for AMD's Zen 4 CPUs and how they were actually automatically targeting performance cores. Uh, what we're gonna be looking at here is they are doing something along those same lines, but actually implementing it to a full degree here where we are looking at effectively Zen 5 CPUs on these chips. However, they are segmented into two different sections. Rather than doing what Intel does, where they actually have two discrete uh, CPU architectures running on their PE cores, what AMD is doing is they're using their full fat Zen 5 here, and then they are having a rearranged Zen 5C, and these are effectively their E cores. So let's talk about that real quick. So if we take a look at their full, uh, full fat Zen 5 cores, we're looking at four core here. Uh, L3 cache is at 16 megabytes, L2 cache is at 4 megabytes. And if we take a look at the eight cores that we have available to us on the Zen 5C part, we still have uh, 16 megabytes of L3 cache. So I'll we'll break that down what that means in a moment. And we have uh, two megabytes of L2 cache. Now, effectively, this is a 12 CPU part. It, it has 12 CPUs. However, in many instances, when we're looking at this, uh, it could actually operate in such a manner that the 4C Zen 5 part has its own performance cores, which it will elect to do two out of the four. Uh, and on the eight core part, it effectively will only allow four cores that will, depending on how it's going to write a uh, run, right, inside of Windows, as well as how Windows schedule will operate. This already operates in such a manner on 7840U that AMD will self-select where its performance cores are, and you can actually see this in hardware info automatically. Again, I touched on this in the video. So we're going to be able to see how this operates going forward, but these should operate, uh, this should be very interesting to see, especially how it works uh, with regard to how it's going to scale with power. So that's the CPU side done. Let's start talking about the GPU side. We're looking at eight working group processors for the RDNA 3 Plus. Effectively, this is 16 CU on the GPU side. This isn't very exciting at first blush, only because when we're taking a look at RDNA 3 Plus, it is obviously going to be fixing some of the things that were happening on RDNA 3 as vis-a-vis uh, -vis as it relates to RDNA 2, where there really wasn't that much of a performance lift. So it remains to be seen how, how this actually works out in practice. Are we going to be able to get more work done inside the same given scope? Like if we set this to 6400 MT, are we, what type of performance improvement are we going to get? When we did that versus RDNA 2 versus RDNA 3, really there was zero difference, like 5%. That's meaningless. Uh, so it remains to be seen how well this is actually going to fix anything for RDNA 3. So that's a open question. Basically, it, at the very least, the only thing that we can hope for is the increased bandwidth from uh, increasing the mega transfers on the newer LPDR5X that we have. On 7840U, a lot of devices, uh, some devices run at 7,500 mega transfers, which does uh, show a performance improvement, whereas we're going to be getting another bit of performance improvement from just the raw bandwidth increase that we get from going to this newer LPDDR5X. 
uh, XNDNA part of it. Uh, this remains to be seen how well this is going to track uh, in so far as it applies to gaming. Right now, we haven't seen any particular uh, help from this on 7840U side. All right, so let's just quickly talk about some of the articles and what they have written here. Strix Point is the codename for AMD's next generation. Again, when we take a look at timelines of when this is going to release, uh, dev-wise, we're going to be looking at quarter one, quarter two of 2024, which means that uh, at the very least, like April or June is when I might receive like a prototype unit. So don't worry too much about having an obsolete 7840 device already. That's not really going to be the case. It's going to be a pretty lengthy amount of time before the next generation comes out. And even right now, with what we know so far, it might not even be all that more performant over what 6800U and 7840U is. It really depends on how much performance we're going to gain from the RDNA 3 Plus fix. Um, and we can see that this mobile processor is exceeding the current Ryzen 7045 series. This is actually incorrect. 7045 is the Dragon Range. 7040 is Phoenix. Uh, let's see, uh, everything else here is what we've already talked about. The other thing I didn't mention was obviously even with Zen, Zen 5 and Zen 5C, they still are full fat Zen 5 processors. There's not really like change there. So they do have uh, simultaneous multi-threading still. So hyper-threading, they still have those, which is why you still have 24 threads there. Let's see if there's any information that gleaned from their graphics side. RDNA 3 Plus, eight working group processors or 16 CU accounting to 1,024 stream processors. 64 TMUs and an unknown number of ROPs, possibly 32, with the probable design goal of offering graphics performance close to a discrete Radeon RX 6500 XT. What is that? Okay, so a quick look at bandwidth. Actually, this does look like it will align with the 6500 uh, XT in terms of how much bandwidth we're going to have from the LPDDR5X part of it, even at 128 bit wide. Uh, AMD will debut its second generation of XNDNA accelerators, the hardware backend of Ryzen AI. On Strix Point, the accelerator is rumored to feature 64 AI engines, which is an, a, a con considerable uptick. Okay, the chip's I.O. is expected to be largely similar with increased memory speeds. Yeah, we've talked about that. This is going to be the more important part, the LPDR5X 8533. Uh, and we don't know if it'll feature PCIe Gen 5. That'll be pretty big, especially for people that care about Oculink. Uh, I'm a big fan of that, so that's something that I would want. At this point, we don't know if Strixpoint is monolithic silicon. Pretty sure it is uh, the only chip that one would be Strixpoint Halo. But apparently, you know, maybe there could be some case that that isn't the case. Uh, let's take a look at hardware times. So again, we're going to be taking a look at this advanced out here. We're here right now, 7840U devices that we're looking at. And then we're going to be taking a look at the next gen uh, as per Red Gaming Tech, the IPC gains from Zen 5 Core will range from 20 to 30%, but to be honest, another 20%. Yeah, uh, again, this goes back to like the integer increase that we saw from news from a few months ago, where we all want to believe that that's going to be the case. Generally speaking, it's probably going to be, that's going to be on the high end. I don't anticipate that, but going from Zen 4 to Zen 5C, uh, Zen 4 to Zen 5 by itself will have a considerable increase in performance per watt. So that's still an improvement on that side, even for us on handheld. So it just remains to be seen how we can manage this type of power and what that relates to, especially with RDNA 3 Plus, and whatever fixes that has, and the increase in, in bandwidth. But the bandwidth side, when going up in bandwidth, is going to cost us more power. So we're still going to have to push more power into it. So you're not going to really see the benefits of that until 20 watt. Anything that's below 15 watt is still going to be an open question. Insofar as what we're looking at for AMD's 8850U saying that the GPU component is going to be similar to an RX 6500 XT is probably correct. I want to say just generally correct at a certain wattage. Definitely we're going to have to be at 28 watt, 28 to 35 watt just to secure that comfortably. Going anything less, yeah, we're going to approach that pretty easily. But again, 15 to 18 watt is most likely going to be still the sweet spot for this. The big part of this that's going to be the question mark is if uh, I and EO and GPD have access to the Strix Point Halo, which as far as I'm aware is delayed uh, until later. So we wouldn't even see them having access to it uh, until the end of Q4 most likely, which would be a 2025 release at the very best. But then it puts them in a weird situation because the next series like the 9860U would then be coming out for them on quarter one. So depending on the time, most likely timing for GPD and INEO wouldn't even work out well to begin with. So likely that we're only going to see 8850U from them just from a timing perspective, right? Because they're small companies and they can't really be having multiple iterations going through. Plus customers really don't like that. So 
Uh, I think from what we're looking at, most likely the 8850U is, uh, from a timeline perspective, don't worry about your 7840U being obsolete so far because you're not going to see anything like this available until at least around June 2024. So we're still, whatever, eight eight months away before that even happens. So if you were waiting for another, the 8850U series to come out and you didn't want to buy this one, uh, I don't think that we're going to see a gigantic increase. The best bet, we're going to be at like 30 to 40%, depending on Zen 5 and if RDNA 3 actually fixes anything. Also, if the latest version of LPDDR5 is actually stable, like we saw problems with 7500 MT. So all of this remains to be seen, but this is the new news that I wanted to talk about. So this is going to be most likely what's going to be in the latest handouts that we'll see. And then obviously AMD's Z2 Extreme is up in the air which direction that AMD is going to go with that. But largely, it's probably going to be the same where it's copying the 8850U and they'll just shave off the AI cores, the XN DNA cores. That's it for me, guys. I hope this was informative. As always, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.